We have an awesome Rick's Corner, and a lot of you have established websites, um, but I think this is good refresher, both for people who have established websites, and of course, if you're getting your site started uh, for the first time. And Rick, being in the support department, you see all sorts of questions coming through the, the ticket system, and I think uh, this has been uh, a pretty common question people ask is, how to set up the, a default email address uh, for their website, and, and then how do you log into that email address to manage the inbox and send emails from there, right? You definitely nailed it. It's a very common thing, especially for websites that are starting out. So what we are going to show everyone are the proper steps that you need to follow in order to make sure that A, your uh, default website is created, and B, that it's added on the appropriate field so that it works the way that it's supposed to. There are a few requirements uh, in order to get this set up to work. The requirements being that your website needs to be on a live domain. Um, the second requirement is super important. Um, this will only work if you have updated the name servers of your domain to our name servers, all right? Which means that if you're using an A record or a C name, you're gonna to need to use a different email provider in order to accomplish a similar setup as what we're going to be showing everyone today. So just to touch on that real quick, so for those of you who might be wondering what a live domain versus uh, the staging domain that he mentioned, uh, in your domain manager, um, everyone that starts with the Brilliant Directories website, you'll have a directory up.com URL. Uh, you'll wanna first connect your live domain name here. And then when you connect your live domain name, there are a couple methods, a name server method, there's an A record method, and there's also a C name record. Uh, this is basically if you want your emails to be managed through your Brilliant Directories admin area, uh, you want to use the name server uh, method. If you're using the A record method in this case, uh, then you'll set up your emails from your GoDaddy or Network Solutions or whoever else the domain registrar is uh, for you. All right, Rick, so uh, let's dive right into it here. So let's go ahead and focus initially on creating the default website, right? And this is where some questions come up very commonly in which people add their default website before creating the actual email address. So let's go ahead and create the email address first, um, which is the first item that we're gonna be doing. Um, on the back end of our Best Dog Groomers NYC website. So like we stated before, what we're gonna be doing right now is creating this email account or email address. All right, so to get started, let's go ahead and navigate here to emails. We wanna open up the option called email accounts. Once again, your website needs to be on a live domain, All right? This won't work if you're using a stationary domain. All right, so what we have to do next is simply click this uh, link here, this button here, it's gonna take us to the C panel and it's going, to op it's going to open up the email account, all right? Um, so if you have already created an email account, you're gonna see this right here. In case you are starting from scratch, <laughs> this is gonna be blank, basically. There's nothing gonna be here. So what we're going to do now is create this, uh, this very useful new email account. Um, you can do so clicking this button here all right, so the uh, the domain is, is going to show up right next to where we're going to create this email account. That's why it's so important for the website to be on a live domain. So some recommendations at this point, since this is going to be the general email for your website, then using a generic type of email will do the trick. So some examples of this could be admin at your domain, info at your domain, no reply, at your domain, contact, at, support, at. Um, those generic type of email addresses work great for this purpose. So let's go ahead and, oh, let's go with hello, at the groomer NYC. Uh, for uh, this example, I'm just gonna use a very generic uh, password. Just gonna retype that in here. It can okay. also generate a password for you, right? You can also generate a password, that's true. All right. What we what we can have what we can do next is uh, either choose to for the email address to be unlimited, which means that it can receive unlimited amount of messages. You can switch that to have a, a limit. I think generally you can set this to unlimited. I don't mm -hmm. think there's any harm doing that. All right. Let's go ahead and generate password just because the one that I created was too generic. It wasn't strong enough. 
Um, we're going to switch that to unlimited. And I'm just going to uncheck this uh, little box here. It basically just sends you some, um, like an welcome email with some client configuration instructions. But we're going to get to that part, to that part in just a second. The next step is going to be click create account. All right, the account hello at dogroomerNYC has been created. Basically, what I'm going to do now is just click here. Okay, so just to recap, we have created a generic email account that's going to work as basically just a communication that gets sent out from your website. So the next step that we need to do is to ensure that we add this email address to the general settings of your site. The, the reason why we want to do that is because when we add it to the general settings of your website, that becomes the email address for your website. So let's go ahead and copy the email address that we created. Let's go ahead and jump back to the Brilliant Directories backend. What we want to do now is navigate to the settings, general settings section, and we're going to update the default website email to the new one that we just created. So let's go ahead and replace the sample ad with the new one that we created. And let's go ahead and move right here to the next field that we have, which basically states what's the email domain that you want to keep using for your website. In this case, it's going to be everything that's after the ad symbols. So we're just going to copy that. I'm going to go ahead and place it right here. Okay, save those changes now. Perfect. And I think it's important to know that default website email address, that's basically the fallback email address that gets sent, for example, when members receive their welcome emails after signing up, uh, when automated lead emails go out. Essentially, any automated emails that your website's going to be sending to recipients, it's going to use this default website email address. And that's kind of why we recommend using uh, something generic that can just represent you know, general support or activity from your website. Just to recap what Rick was saying, here are just like five or six examples of some generic ones that we like. Uh, maybe you have your own, but you can use hello, info, no reply, contact, support at, or admin at. Those are just some very common ones that you could and, and should use for the default website email address. All right, so we have already created the email account. We have successfully added this email account to the general settings. The next logical step is to access the inbox and view all my correspondence. All right, so one way to do it, I'm actually going to show you two ways. I'm going to show you the first one. Um, I don't want to confuse anyone, but we're going to start basically from the same place that we started before. So if I go to emails and if I go to email accounts, I'm also going to click where it says add email address. But again, I don't want to confuse anyone. What I'm going to be showing you at this point is how to access the email account that we just created. Let's go ahead and click on that button, add edit email addresses. All right, so when you have, again, created the email account, you're going to see the email account here. And we'll, the option that we're looking for is this one called access webmail. Webmail basically, gives you the option to choose three different clients that you can use to check your inbox. I'm gonna go ahead and click access webmail here real quick. Those three options are Hordy, Roundcube, and Squirrel Mail. So you, you can go ahead and choose which you wanna use, right, by default. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this one as the default one, and I'm gonna go ahead and access it just by clicking on the icon. So there you go. Um, as you can see here, I'm in the inbox for hello at dogroomernyc.com. Okay, perfect. So that's going to be one way in which you can go ahead and check what's, uh, what's happening in your inbox, right? So it does require some steps. You need to go to emails, email accounts, add an email address, um, and then just choose the access webmail option that we have there. And just to note, like that's a super admin way. Like if you're the owner of the site, you can then quickly log into anyone's, um, any of your staff, staff's inboxes there with, with one click. Um, and then also now that you're logged into here, um, you can both view inbox emails and you can also compose emails from here. The second method that I'm going to show everyone how you can access webmail. I just uh, moved over to the back end of real directories. I click here where it says visit website. So I would say a shortcut in order to access your webmail account, it's going to be by going to your domain slash webmail. 
and there you go. What this will allow you to do is to use the email address that we created, hello at doggroomernyc.com. I didn't learn the password myself. It's a very strong password. Um, <laughs> I kind of forgot it. I'm, I'm sorry about that. So okay. basically just add the password right here and you're going to eventually just end up logging into the same email inbox that we saw before. Perfect. So that would be a method where um, your individual users would log into their, their inboxes. Exactly correct. That's the way in which you can access your inboxes without the need of accessing Brilliant Directory's backend. Perfect. All right. So we know how to create right. the email account. We know how to assign it as the general default uh, email address for the site. We know how to view the inbox. Now here's something that comes up pretty often as well is, is forwarding this email. Correct, because or or because the re the reason why um, a lot of people are interested in creating email forwarders is so that you don't have to go in different inboxes and check all your correspondence and all correspondence in all those different inboxes. You can go ahead and set up an email forwarder and then receive on your main personal email any correspondence that's also being sent to those other email accounts that you created. Fortunately, the way you set that up is super easy, and I'm also going to be happy to show you guys how to set this one up. All right, let me jump back to Brilliant Directories here, back end. I'm going to start from the dashboard so that everyone is on the same page. What you want to do is navigate to the email section. You want to click email accounts. Now, this time, instead of clicking on add email addresses, we're going to click on the one to the right that says add edit email forwarders. Just go ahead and click on that one. Basically a forwarder, what it will do is receive the email and identify, all right, so this email, I need to forward it to this other email account. All right, let's go ahead and click here where it says add forwarder. All right, the address to forward. So this is the uh, the email, the, the email address that's going to receive the first message. So in this case, it was hello right? Hello at groomersnyc.com. And then where you want those emails to end up. So let's say uh, you want those to end up at rick at brilliantdirectories.com. Okay. So this means that if once I create this forwarder, e emails coming into hello at groomersnyc.com are going to automatically end up at rick at brilliantdirectories.com. Let's click add forwarder here. And what's really nice is the email will still go to the hello at inbox. And in addition to that, it will also be forwarded to the uh, the email, the forward email that you've defined here as well. So if you have lots of different staff or managers, sometimes you may not just need to set up an individual email from them. You could just set up forwarders um, if it's just about getting notifications and things like that. If they don't actually need to reply to those emails and it's just about receiving notifications, forwarders are a great tool to use for that. Correct. And very important, this is optional, right? You don't have to do this in order to get your emails to work. This is just in case this works for your own email setup. All right, so that's the third thing that we wanted to talk about, which was how to create those email folders, make sure that any email correspondence that you're receiving uh, doesn't go noticed because you're gonna be receiving it on your mail, main personal account. Now, the fourth thing that we also wanted to talk about, it's also optional. But this is where it becomes really interesting because what I showed you guys before were the different webmail clients, right? So we saw Hordy, we saw Roundcube, we saw Square Mail. But what if you want to use the mail app on your iPhone? How to set it up so that I can also check my correspondence, not only by going to, to slash webmail, but also uh, using my own type of device, right, to check this out. What's really cool about this is I, I have an inbox, and I actually manage uh, six different email addresses um, just for different departments from, from the business from that one uh, inbox. I just choose who I want to send emails from when I'm composing an email. So if you do have a personal inbox like a Gmail or Outlook, this is a great method to also include your business email in there. And when you're composing emails, you can choose for those emails to be sent from the business email address um, if you wanted to do so. So Rick, let me pass the controls over to you and uh, you can kind of show us the quick and easy way to do this. Okay, so this has to be set up on a per 
email account basis, all right? So we, we have to, again, do the, all the process that we've done so far of creating the account, making sure that those exist, right? And then what we're gonna do is hit the same button that we've clicked a couple of times already tonight. We're gonna click on that one because what we're after are these options that we see here, where it says connect devices, all right? Again, this needs to be done on a per email account, which means that if I do it for this one, it won't do it automatically for this other one. I need to do it each one. Um, so let's go ahead and click here, where it says connect devices. And what we have here are all the instructions that you need to follow in order to set this up, depending on what device you want to use. I think the key with this, with the connecting devices, is uh, there's infinite number of uh, devices or, or programs you can connect an email address to. Basically, they all have their own steps and instructions to connect an email address uh, to them. But the information that you'll need to plug and fill in is on this page, essentially. So whatever their configuration steps are, 99% um, of the time, the information on this page, which looks like Chinese to me, but uh, <laughs> all you have to do is see what they're asking for you to uh, include in the configuration and then just copy and paste those values here. Um, really the most important things are the username and the password. Obviously the password's not listed here, so when you're creating your password, just make sure you save it in a secure place so when you want to connect it uh, to another device or program, uh, you can just quickly put the uh, username and password and then follow the rest of the instructions here as well. I must say that the iPhone setup is super, super easy to do. So yeah, great feedback there. Keep in mind, this step is also optional. You don't have to configure this. You can always keep on using webmail. Thank you, Jason. All right, good stuff right. there.